What's going on, YouTube Metal Complex here, and welcome to episode eight. Is it 18? I don't know. You'll see a, a subtitle down there if I'm wrong. I think it's episode 18 of The Knife Guy. If you are new to my channel or you just came out of some random corner of the internet and you're thinking, what the heck? What have I stumbled into? I am a knife guy. I am a knife user, knife collector, uh, knife enthusiast. Uh, did I say enthusiast already? I don't know. I'm a knife guy of all sorts. Um, a lot of you watching, in fact, most of you watching are uh, most likely some type of knife guy or gal in your own social setting. And uh, this show, I, uh, I show every single Sunday. And uh, as I explained earlier on in the episode, there are somewhere around 17 other episodes of this in a playlist on my channel. Um, I like to talk about experiences that we all share in some way, shape, or form. You know, we all kind of take our own path as knife guys and gals, but um, we definitely have a lot of the same experiences. And uh, what I like to do is I like to pick up knives uh, that I've got laying out here on the table. Some of them are mine and some of them uh, have been offered up for review uh, by my generous viewers. Um, and I like to just kind of open them and close them and give you guys something to sit back and watch uh, on a, uh, an, a lazy Sunday. I gotta remember that that's a double detent knife because I am gonna cut myself with that thing. So today's topic I think you guys will find humorous and I'm not sure exactly what to call it. If somebody could help me out with a, uh, a word for this, but you know when you know, either your husband or wife or your, your significant other or, you know, maybe your brother or sister, whoever is dragging you to some, you know, a mall or a big shopping center, whether it's Walmart or Cabela's, Bass Pro Shop, uh, they're dragging you to some hardware store or some, you're going because you are obligated to go. There's something that is there that you have, you need or they need for you or you have, you have to weigh in on, right? And your knife instinct is thinking, are there knives anywhere where we're going, right? That's all you can think about. You don't say it in my, <laughs> in my house, if my wife and I have to go somewhere, I don't say, uh, as soon as we get there, I'm darting to the back of the store. Um, but I definitely do it. You know, in, in my town where I live, we have maybe three places that have meaningful, like good knives. And then we have Walmart. You can get some good stuff at Walmart. And then we've got some other places, weird stuff that have knife displays. It doesn't matter what type of knife guy you are. It doesn't matter if you're only into the mega exotic stuff. It doesn't matter if you're into the budget stuff. It, it doesn't matter. Your, your instinct, your, your internal knife guy is, will sniff out that display <laughs> every single time. You're like, I'm going to go check out the wrenches, whatever, you know, I'm going to go check out the, the sandals, you know, and you just leave <laughs> and you just go right back to the counter and you look at stuff that a lot of times you have no real interest in buying, but you go back there because you, because you can't help it. It's a bloodlust, right? It's your internal radar. Just like, I know that there are knives here. There's the work gloves. There's the tape measures. There's the, you know, there's the automotive department. There's the, the sporting goods department. And there's the knife thing right in the corner. You know, like we know, we know all the stuff in the stores that are surrounding that. And there's always a guy or girl right behind that counter that just looks like they don't want to be there. And we all do this, okay? If you're... If you've been on my Instagram, I make memes about this. Um, we all do this, and it's kind of it's kind of shameful, I'll admit. But we see that person standing there, and we see that display, and you walk up, like you, you know, you don't have you don't you generally don't have the intention of buying something. Maybe you do, but if even if you do, before you buy, you are gonna find some way to let that person at the counter know that you know more than them and you're gonna drag that out. Chances are you've got something cool in your pocket, right? Uh, today I'm carrying the, the Spyderco uh, pair of three. Now I try not to do this anymore, but even when I walk up to these counters and I'm like, don't be a D-bag, just look, don't, don't find a way to talk about what's in your pocket and try to impress this person because they don't care. They're working a shift. They don't even want to be there. Let alone do they want to hear about what you have in your pocket. And I, they're probably not knife people. I they, they probably just work in the department and are rotating into that station, right? But 
because we're knife people, our instinct tells us they're a knife person, they're in front of the display, I want to go look at, I want to talk with them, but I want to slowly explain to them that I know more than them. Now, this was another Knife Guy episode. I actually talked about this, you know, uh, once before in a different light, but the whole being attracted by the display, the knife display in whatever store you're in and going up, that that's a thing that we, most of us do, right? So you you walk up, I'm gonna describe, tell me, tell me how many of you, I'm, I'm hitting this nail on the head. You walk up, hands in your pockets, your head's down, you're almost trying to pretend like you don't even know that they're there. And then they give you the obligatory, anything you wanna see? And you go, eh, you lean over, <laughs> you do that thing where you, both hands are in your pockets, your elbows are out and you lean over and you give a, ah, and you, you look in there. I don't know. You know, I got a knife for this, but I've been thinking about maybe, you know, I just need a, I just need a different blade, you know? I uh, need something with a little bit more. And you, you slowly start to say things like, I need something with a little more of a flat grind, you know? Something that's a little bit, you know, more slicey. And then a lot of people right then and there, then we whip out our, you know, this is good for bladely doodle bladle deedle do, but I'd really like something for diddle bladle, whatever. It's it's nonsense because you don't have any. There's most of us. We get to that point and we're not. We're just looking for an opportunity to pull our knife out and show it to this poor person who's like, oh my God, who is this? I want to get out of here. You know, I got a I got a lunch date at Olive Garden. I want to get out of here. So they <laughs> they don't care. But some of us go beyond that. You know, some of us want to display our knowledge of brands. Yeah, you know, CRKT, or the, just to let them know, you know, Columbia River Knife and Tool, you know, they make some good stuff, but they, you know, sometimes they miss the mark. Or, you know, I really like, if you're at Walmart, I love Spyderco, but I don't know about these Chinese brands. You're letting them know that you're a Spyderco fan, and at the same time, you disapprove of, may, maybe, and I'm not saying that I do, I'm just giving an example, that you are aware that they have multiple plants and that you disapprove of one of the plants or are not 100% sold on one of the uh, manufacturing zones for one of their knives. The truth is, is I actually really, the, the one I'm referring to, if you guys have been to Walmart, the Spyderco Tenacious is always there. Actually, it's there, but they're like, oh, we're sold out of that model. I can't sell you the display one. <laughs> I've actually asked before, but yeah, that's what we're doing. You're not, you're not inquiring to help this person, you know, decide how to make a sale. All you're doing is asking questions that incite or leave little threads out for him to ask questions or engage with you so that you can slowly tell that person how much more you know than them. The actual meme that I made that I'm referring to is uh, any of you who watch Parks and Recreation know that scene. I don't know. Ron Swanson is, uh, I think he's at Lowe's. And so one of the employees comes up and there's like any, you know, you got any projects you're working on? And he stops and stares the guy directly in the face does his, you know, his facial expression is just is like menacing and direct, and he says, "I know more than you," and then he just walks away. One of the funniest scenes I've ever seen. But we all feel, like, you know, when you and I think I said when you walk up to the, you know, the Bella's knife display, and the guy behind the counter asks if you have any questions. That's how we react to that. We're like, "I know more than you. Don't ask me if I have any questions. I'm, how dare you? I'm a knife professional. I know so much more." They don't care. They don't care. Not everybody who is just standing behind a knife display um, needs to know how much of a knife guy you are. And here's the thing. It's not, if you're at a bigger place, if you're at a Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's or whatever, you're at a much bigger area. One of those areas where the guy who's in charge of the display actually stands in the middle of it and the displays go all the way around. There's generally multiple people standing around that, um, <laughs> standing around that display and you assess you stand you're like in the coat rack you're like looking they're like there, there's six of them i bet that guy's a knife guy that guy's a knife guy that guy doesn't know what the heck he's looking at and uh that guy is is just killing time because he doesn't want to be here uh, you know we we do that so, i mean some of you are like oh my gosh you're crazy i don't do that but i know that there are some of you who do that and here's why i'm saying this because i used to do that and i still kind of do it <laughs> You walk up and maybe you're trying to, you know, initially maybe you just use the display guy as a, a reason to let everybody else know that you have arrived. The knife guy has arrived, everybody. Don't worry. 
I'm going to ask a few trivial questions and then I'm going to go around to each one of you and slowly explain how much more I know than you and why your choice is stupid. You know, I mean, not really. That's that I'm I'm exaggerating. I have never done that in my entire life. But in in your mind you're like in some situations you're thinking you know, what's that guy looking at? Like I remember being at Cabela's and seeing a guy look into a display and the display had, this was back when ZT had a whole bunch of models that I loved. There were ZT knives, there were Benchmade knives, there were some Spyderco knives, Kershaw knives. What else does uh, Cabela's carry? Uh, basically you're kind of, your 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 American production brands that everybody's aware of and then they carry some off-brand stuff. This guy had a case that he was looking at. It wasn't a it was, it was a case, but it wasn't like a typical slip drawer or something else. It was an inexpensive knife. And I had this overwhelming, illogical urge to just throw myself, my big stupid body into this guy's life and, expl- and, and ask him a bunch of questions only so that I could basically tell him that he should be choosing something else besides case. And here's the funny thing. Case is actually, they actually make some good knives. And for a lot of people, that's all they'll ever need. And this guy probably didn't need my advice and probably, you know, he probably knew what he was looking at. But I remember thinking like, I should find out if that guy knows about ZT knives. And then I should try to convince him to buy a ZT knife. Why? Why did that go into my brain? But I, 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 I didn't do that. I didn't. But that it entered, that thought entered my head. For whatever reason, it wasn't just getting the enjoyment out of being able to look at some cool knives, whether or not I actually had the intention of buying them. I actually wanted to engage with everybody around me in a way that was kind of like, you know, like drawing attention to myself. Now, um, I've said this before in another video, I, all of us have more or less of an ego. Um, nobody has no ego. If you tell yourself that you don't have an ego, that's your ego telling you to tell everybody else that you're amazing because you don't have an ego. Is that, I mean, there's multi-level irony there. Um, everybody has an ego. Some people's are, are more or less, you know, big or small, and some people's are more or less easily bruised. Um, but our ego, sometimes it drives us to actually do things, and other times it just puts thoughts in our heads. I'm the type of person where my ego puts a bunch of stupid and irrational thoughts in my head and I very rarely actually act on them. What actually ended up happening that day is I looked around at all these people looking at knives and I just imagined this scenario where I was basically, you know, like I, it was like having a tiny YouTube channel where you're up on a soapbox and you're talking about everything that you know about folding knives, you know? And this was well before I had the channel and I mean, honestly, the, it's these types of thoughts, you know, my desire to want to communicate, not to, like forcefully educate people, but truthfully just to interact with people who are like me and enjoy folding knives, you know? And, and yeah, if the occasional new person comes in and they want some direction, right? That's where I had to take my irrational thoughts and go, shut up, that's egotistical. What you should do is offer advice to people who are asking for it. So new people are like, hey man, I don't understand this. Can you give me some advice on this? Oh yeah, for sure, man. I love doing that. That's a lot of fun. That's what I like to do. But anyways, Um, What actually ended up happening that day was nothing. Ricky, if you're watching this, uh, it was when I sent you a picture of the, uh, this was right after the, um, you know what, no, you know what, this was, (laughs) this was while I had the channel because the picture I sent you was the ZT0393, the original blue and black, uh, blue uh, anodized titanium frame with a a two-tone blade, the black and satin blade, and I sent you a picture and I was like, I finally got an opportunity to handle one of these. But... I did do that thing where I walked up to the guy and I was like, yeah, I've been looking at some of these ZT knives. I'm a real big fan of the Hinderer collaborations. That was my way of saying, do you know about Hinderer? Do you know about Hinderer, good sir? I don't think you do. I'm, a, I'm about to educate you. That's, that was me doing that. That was my ego driving me to do, I was trying to set myself up for that. It didn't pan out the way that I wanted because surprise, the guy behind the counter didn't care. He was like, yeah, great. Okay, so here's the knife you want to look at. Uh, I'm going to go back over here and finish my soda. <laughs> so I sent, I did get an opportunity to handle both the GTC, was it the Airborne, that weird one with the compound grind, and the, the at the time, the brand new ZT0393. And I sent a message to Ricky and I was like, both of these are actually really amazing flippers, blah, blah, blah. But I ended up spending like two and a half hours at that knife display because uh, my wife and my extended family were shopping around at Cabela's and, and doing other things. 
Cabela's is an awesome place, but truthfully, any place that has a knife display, I'm enough of a knife guy. Now, if you're both into knives and firearms, and you're into fishing, oh my god, I, do you guys ever leave that store? I mean, I wouldn't. If I was into all that stuff, I'd never leave, right? But I'm not into the bow hunting and the firearms and the fishing. And Well, I mean, I like fishing. I live in Kansas, but I'm not like, in, I'm not into it. I'm into knives. So if I go to a place like that, you better believe I am like a helicopter just around it. I will, any any model, even that's something that's not interesting to me, I will ask to handle it just so I can look at it. You know, I will bother the crap out of the guy behind the uh, display case. And, you know, every time I leave and I walk away, it's like the, the euphoria and the excitement of the situation, looking at new stuff and kind of being in public and being in a situation where I can look at knives in a display, you know, and I'm excited about it a little bit. And I, you know, finally my extended family's done and they come back and they're like, you know, they, they're like, oh, surprise, surprise, you're still at the knife display. And then they're like, you ready to go? And I'm like, yeah. And throughout the, I actually almost convinced myself multiple times to buy something that I know that I don't need. We all do that, right? I could buy that, it's only 40 bucks. I don't need it. I don't even think I really want it, but I could buy that right now. And a lot of us do. I, I didn't that day, but then I walked away and I remember feeling this draining feeling like, oh my God, that poor guy at the display. And actually generally they rotate because it's like I was there for so long that somebody else's shift started. <laughs> so I tortured two people and probably multiple people around me who actually were considering buying knives. Oh my gosh, you guys are like, Wow, Metal Complex is kind of a douche. Not real. This is mainly meant to entertain you guys. This is meant to like, you know, kind of share in a mental experience. The actual experience for these people, like in terms of their opinion of me, was probably just like, this guy really likes knives and he's kind of hovering around the display. He's been here for a while. That's truthfully probably what it looked like. But this was what was going on inside my head. So anyways, I le I'm walking away from the display and there's this draining feeling like, Oh my gosh, I just tortured two people for two and a half hours, made them answer a whole bunch of questions, and then I didn't buy anything. It's not like they're making commission on this. That's a lot of guys at these general displays don't make commission on anything, but that's what we do, you know? It is very rare, and this has happened just a couple of times, that the person behind the display, number one, actually knows their stuff, and number two, actually wants to engage with me. Literally, I think twice, Twice I was at a place like that where the the guy behind the counter was a legit knife guy. And then you know when that happens, it's like it's like hot energy just from your toes and it washes up, you know, straight up to your to your forehead and you're like, "Oh my gosh, a fellow a fellow brethren or whatever." And it's all, it's like that's, you know, that kind of like that spark, there's like electricity, you know, that's like arcing between you and you're like oh man and then you start engaging with them in a different way then it's a lot you sometimes it's your ego trying to detest who knows more but then you're like do you know about this you know about this you know about this and you're connecting and you're talking and twice that's happened and i ruined it for everybody else who was trying to shop for knives because then this guy was not interested in interacting with anybody else but that's only happened twice it's pretty rare and uh, even then you're still negatively affecting the people around you um so I, I mean, there's no lesson to be, I'm not like gonna end this video with like, the lesson is, you know, learn to respect, no, I'm just saying like, hey, we do this. <laughs> We're knife nuts, a lot of us do this, and if we don't outwardly do it, we think about it. Um, I guess the, the key is, is learning from, from, from experiences where you have overly annoyed somebody to do it less the next time. I'm at a point where I can walk up to a display now and just look, but I still think about my ego is still like, go on, tell him what you know. Show him the knife that's in your pocket. See what he thinks. See what he's got in his pocket. Ah, uh, I bet it's something from China. You know, like we, we do that. <laughs> Sorry if this was, if this sounded egotistical or preachy in any way. I'm never, this is all just meant to entertain and make you guys laugh on a Sunday. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of The Knife Guy, uh, or at least found it entertaining, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And uh, if you enjoy all my content, then go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo and subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.